In our previous video, we saw how different light shaping tools affect the quality of light. The shadow it makes and the, the way the light falls off and the catch light it makes in the eye, etc. This video is also about light, except that it's about the quality of the light at varying distances in relation to the subject. Welcome to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishnan. Today's session involves a little bit of physics. I know, we photographers, most of us don't really enjoy science. In fact, I ran away from college, uh, of course, to learn photography. It's called the inverse square law. It basically means that every time the distance of the light source doubles from the subject in relation to the subject, the light reduces to one fourth. Well, it naturally, we all expect if the light the distance doubles, the light also fall, becomes 50%, meaning reduces by half. But instead, uh, the light reduces by 75% and reduces down to 25%. In the olden days, we used to use uh, a light meter and go and take a reading every time you shift the light from the subject. In the digital world, we don't use it uh, very often. So the, the, the setup is that uh, we have a camera, cameras on a tripod. Um, I'm using a Nikon D850 with a Nikkor uh, 51.4 lens uh, and I'm using a TTL commander to control a flash. It's a Godox uh, AD600B and I've mounted a beauty dish on it. Well, you can see um, a tape running diagonally across uh, the floor. I have marked at 1 feet, 2 feet, 4, 8 and 16. The source is placed at 1 feet distance and I'm going to have our favorite model, Isha here. Thank you, Isha. That's where you're supposed to be. Now she's going to be very close. Let me tell you, it is not exactly the doubling of the distance and the inverse square law that we are really worried about here. What we are worried about, or we're going to show, is the way the light falls off from our subject every time I double the distance, or every time I take the light away from my subject. For which, I need one more model. Now, this time, it's going to be Vino. Yep. Um, I have set the camera on manual mode, shooting at one by two hundredths of a second, so that I have the lights uh, properly exposed and I'm shooting at f5.6, the first shot at the light source at one feet. Ready. Okay, so I'm going to shift the light from here to two feet. Basically what I'm doubling is the source. So the source is from here, so I'm going to align that to here. Okay, so now the distance between this and this is now two feet. Same everything. Nice and second one. The four feet onwards, you actually start seeing a lot of difference. Okay, that's the four feet. Nice and that's the eight feet. And uh, we're going to go to the 16 feet, which is the last shot. Sixteen feet. And nice. Okay. Uh, now, what we do is we'll pull out all these images onto the computer screen. We'll go one by one as usual and uh, discuss about it. Even if you are not aware of uh, the gravitational force, say for example, still the apple in your backyard or the mango or the coconut for example, it's going to still fall down and hit the ground below. It's the same with photography. Even if you are not aware of uh, the inverse square law, the light is still going to behave exactly the same way. Except that if you know about the rule, you can put it to use in a good way, in a more creative way. We have the five images that we shot right in front of us and let's go through it one by one and let me tell you at the end what has really happened. I'm sure by the end you will know what has really happened. Image one, 
flashes at the closest point um, at one feet distance. Uh, Isha's face is well lit and uh, you can see our other model though he is standing very close to Isha, he is underexposed by probably a couple of stops. In the second image, the distance has doubled. Isha is of course is uh, lit properly and you can see the model who is next to Isha is now becoming slowly brighter. His face is now a little brighter. And in the third one, the flash is four feet away when the, uh, in the third image, Isha is of course uh, properly lit. And now you can see Venus face lit much better. And you can also notice the background becoming better uh, or, or more evenly lit. Fourth image, the flash is at eight feet distance. Well, Isha's face and Venus face is lit equally well and the background is a little more even. And then the final one where the flash was 16 feet away, Isha's face is lit well, uh, Vinu's face is lit equally well, and the background is equally more bright, more evenly lit. The actual reason is something called light fall off. When the light is at a close distance, uh, the, in the first shot, light falls off much faster. The, it is the fall off is much stronger because of which we know is not getting sufficient light, though the light is very close. The next one, double distance, light has gone away, light has spread, light is now falling more evenly all around and the fall off has reduced and it is increasingly reducing as we take the light further and further away from the subject. And you will see at the end, at F16, you have a evenly lit frame. That's because the light fall off is minimum there. Well, if you have a single model to shoot, yes, you can bring, keep the light very close but you have more than, like wedding photographers often face this problem. His uh, bride is lit well, the bridegroom is not, or the bridegroom is lit well and the bride is not. Or if you have a four member group and you have only one light source to light them up, and if you keep the light close to your subject, you might experience this kind of uh, scenario. But if you shift the light a few feet away from your subject, you will be able to get more evenly lit uh, picture. We recommend that uh, you do this exercise uh, at your place and see how uh, the light behaves and understand it for yourself. We will soon upload another video which illustrates uh, the inverse square law, the use of inverse square law in another situation. So watch out for that. Uh, so what are you waiting for? Hit that like button, subscribe, share, and yes, of course, uh, interact with us uh, the way you've been doing all this while. Bye for now.